Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Journey Podcast. Thank you for tuning in once again. If you've been tuning in, you know the episodes are here to inspire you as you become, wherever you're doing, wherever you are, but hopefully this pushes you forward in some type of way. All right, that's over. All right, I'm joined here by <laughs> two of my really, really good friends. Um, I met, me and Bray have known each other for a, a lifetime. A uh, Mackenzie, like four years. Uh, but two great people, two people are very successful. They do, uh, two fun people. And we've had a lot of memories together, even though we like collectively we won't know each other for like a short period of time. Right. I feel like we've, it feels like forever. For just, no you know, just, yeah. I don't know. It's been a lot of good memories. So welcome Brayden, Mackenzie. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast, man. That's so crazy that it's been four years. Yeah, it is. It's been four we really got close like four years ago, probably. Yeah, four years ago. But we, we've been dating for three, so she. I guess it wasn't four years. It's been three. Well, three, three. I like had met you before we yeah, actually yeah, started yeah, yeah. dating. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Um, yeah. So I met Brayden. I can say I don't know if you when you grew up, so you don't really say you met nobody. We yeah, gr- yeah, we, grew we grew up, up together. together. Yeah. I've been knowing him since we were little kids. Uh, his dad coached me at YMCA basketball. DL. Shout out to DGL. Um, Brayden wanted to be a hooper, and then. Yeah, that's how we kind of came up together. We were, I was really cool with his older brother. We were like the same grade, and then he was younger than me. Right. And then naturally throughout college, we kind of became really good friends. For sure. Yeah, I think? feel like we got we got closer probably junior year, my junior year. Right. I feel like that's when I kind of started maturing. I feel like he was too mature for me for a little <laughs> minute. I didn't know if I was on the same type of time. Hey, everybody got to go on their own path, you know, their own journey. And then I met, I met Mackenzie, and we can... <laughs> I met I met Mackenzie. They were uh y'all were figuring some stuff out at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I met them interesting time. It was a fun night though. It was that it was your that was your eighteenth? No, not eighteenth. Your twentieth nah. birthday. It was KJ's. It was KJ's, KJ's birthday. birthday. KJ's, it was KJ's birthday. birthday. Yeah. Nineteenth was it? Nineteenth, twentieth. For him? Yeah. Oh, he old. He he was. Twenty second birthday. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, not yeah. his twenty because I was still at the ridge. I, I was, think it, it, it had to be. It had to be his twenty first then. Twenty first um, or his twenty second. Wow. When's his birthday? He old. What's the month? January. It, it was twenty twenty. Okay. So he yeah. Yeah, it was. It was right it was before twenty twenty. So he right before COVID. So it was. So he was twenty two. Wow. No. 21. 20, he was 21. 21. So, okay. He was 21. He was yeah. 21. He was 21. We met that night. We all lived in the same neighborhood. They threw like a little birthday party and I met her that night. And um, yeah, it all worked out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it, all worked, it all worked out. It, it all worked out. All right, let's get in. How'd y'all meet? Well, we you met through a mutual friend, which is actually the reason we met the first time. It is. The same person, Anna Reed. High school friend. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess Anna Reed had gone to school with both of y'all, right? Yeah. And then yeah. I was living with Anna Reed my sophomore year. Um, and then we were out downtown Clemson at 356 and she Shut up. <laughs> Shut up <for> <laughs> Honestly, 356 is where people no. fall in love. Um, <laughs> <For real. laughs> but um, I guess they knew each other, so we were just we were out and Braden came up and was like up and was like, it's good to see you and then she introduced us and then Yeah, so that, it was crazy because that was the year I was suspended. So like for if I wasn't, right, so if that I was wasn't, crazy, so if I wasn't suspended, probably wouldn't have mattered because I wouldn't have been out because it was a Friday night. Mm. I really wasn't even supposed to be out. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's supposed to be right routine, routine. Yeah, You're supposed to and I get actually, your regardless, I almost man. didn't go into three five six because they had it was like really a it was before a big game. It was some home game that was like there was a lot of people in town and they had a cover fee. And I was like, I'm not paying a cover fee to get in, but Never. somehow someone got us in around the line. Yeah. And then that's when we met. But I was like, it would have been crazy if I didn't go in there and you weren't there. We would have never met. Never met. But meant to be. What was, um? I feel like first story is always good. But then you kind of look back and like so much happens and y'all kind of like, because when I, that night, that was, what was the time set between that and KJ's birthday party? Like four or Six, five months. Yeah. It was October. I, I could literally oh, so, tell you the exact so, day. I was about to say, she remembers literally everything. It was October 11th. <laughs> okay. 2019. <laughs> Look, you so, know. So, <laughs> yeah. so like two months. Yeah. What, two and a half months. When McKenzie was on here, we talked about, walk me through your process. I feel like it's always on the guy, usually, that's dragging a feet to get to the commitment part. 100%. You know, like, because it's, 100%. maybe it's just the way we come up. It's just like, probably isn't the best way we came up, but you just don't want to like, once you commit, like, then you're just done. Well, for, I feel like for me, I really didn't know what commitment looked like. And it scared me, for real. So I, so I was 
Because I never really saw it growing up. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So I didn't, I didn't really... It just scared me. I, it put me in a position where it was like I was like unknown. Like I was so used to the routine of the lifestyle I was living. Right. So I was content with that. I was like, "You telling me I gotta I gotta put down everything?" Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, even even like not as far as like other girls and stuff, but even such stuff as like just my alone time. Like I'm always by myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like she's always with me. Yeah. You know, and it's like I had to get used to that, and some it scared me a little bit in the beginning. No, same. I think that's like, bro, we talked about that last time. It was, I thought that's the biggest thing. It's just the, it's not even because you definitely like the person, you like the girl, but it's just the idea of like, of the, the idea of commitment. I don't know why it's so scary. And I said, I didn't really see it growing up either. So I always right. thought, bro, once you commit, bro, I lose all my freedom, bro. I'm locked down. Like life right. is over. And people, one, people get such bad relationship advice. People always like, man, once you get your girl, or once you get married, once you, they always like life, they always make it seem life like stops. life sucks or right. life stops. It's like, bro, you, just because your life sucks doesn't mean mine's going to suck. You know, <laughs> right. I, but I feel like a commitment. What do you, as far as a woman, what do you feel like that like talking stage is like? It's different because I, I feel like more times women wanted to kind of go further, faster, and like guys are kind of like, yeah, uh, because I feel like for me, when I met Brayden and I knew that I really liked him. I mean, there's like always that awkward like first month when you're figuring someone out, like right. trying to hang out with them. Um, but then once I knew that I really liked him, I not like I was trying to get married and engaged like yeah. then, but I kind of knew. I feel like when you meet someone you know, and once you get past the scary like being scared to commit, whatever, then it's just like I wouldn't want to be with anyone else mm. besides Brayden. I knew that. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like it was a really easy decision for me, but Brayden was, I, he knew he was just like. <laughs> I, I, knew, I, I knew the decision, what decision needed to be made, it, but I just, it took me a little minute. Yeah. It, took, it, took, it took me a little minute. It, so actually, it, it actually took him me saying, like, I'm done. And like I'm walking away because I deserve more. I didn't know that. And then he was like, "Oh no!" Like he was like, was, yeah. Like he realized then. That's the same thing happened to us. Yeah. If a girl give you look, for all the girls out there, sometimes if a guy is dragging his feet, you give him an ultimatum. You give him an ultimatum. You know, and that's what they got to make. A that's what you got to make a decision because really nobody really wants to lose out. But then the, if it actually comes to the fact that you're like, all right, I'm gonna walk away. Did you really mean it though? Oh, I meant it. Okay, okay. Because you know, some people. She meant it. She meant it. I didn't. I would because it had been October to. I said that right before we went on spring break. So it was like early six March. Months. Yeah. Six months of me, more like five months, because the first month is kind of weird. Five yeah. months of me being like, I want to be with you. I know, like we can make it work. And then he's like, I just need time. So right. it's five months, and I'm like, you treat me like <laughs> you want me around, and then you don't want to make a commitment. And right. like as much as I like you, I just deserve more than that. And so I was like. It was a lot of back and forth, and then right before spring break, I told him that, and I was like, I'm really... He knew I was serious, because we didn't talk for a few days. Right. And that's when he was like, oh, she's serious. She's not saying this just to, like, get my attention. What was going through your head? Uh... I really don't... I feel like it was, it was one of those situations where she told it to me, and at the time, I was like, eh. Eh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Because he was about to go yeah. on spring break in Miami. I'm about to go on spring break. I'm with the guys. I'm yeah. like, eh. It's whatever. Right. But then after a couple of days, I'm like, nah. Because I was in Miami and I hit her. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Like, I need to, I need to stop. I think I hit her. I think, what was my exact words? I need to stop tripping. Yeah. Or I need to, something along those lines. Right. Um, And then after that, it was, well, that's when COVID happened. Yeah. And then I swear we was at my grandparents' it crib. Was, and like, yeah. I feel like, like it, moved, complete, it happened. So, yeah. Everything yeah. happened. COVID did speed up. A, that's a crazy, I feel a lot of people, either that, during that time, COVID is one of those years where either make a break, made a break everything. Because mm -hmm. it's like either you got really close to somebody or you just didn't talk to somebody right. for forever. Right. Um, for us, I feel like it was, we were around each other all the time. So it like, like it seems like we've been together for like 10 years, bro. It <laughs> I does. Remember, it feels like, I mean, yeah. we've been living with each other since, like, since 2020. Yeah. So like. We made, I remember we made our first YouTube video as a Q&A. And we told everyone we had been dating for like two months. And they were like, we thought y'all had been together for five years. And we we're like, well, right. we've been together every single day. Right. So it just speeds up the whole like awkward, awkward phase, phase of dating. Yeah, it's like things you don't really know about somebody until you start living with them. We figured that out in like the first month. Right. It was like, I ain't like the stuff she did. She ain't like the stuff I did. So we knew, like, we kind of had an idea of what like aggravated each other, what annoyed each other. What, but, um, I think one of the things I always like hearing about, what about her stood out to you? 
Because that's a big thing. I feel like for me, it was like you meet a lot of girls, especially in college, especially how we we played or moved. Like as a four right. player, you see a lot of people. You got a lot of options and you expose a lot of stuff. And not that all girls are the same, but there's a lot of shallowness, especially in college. 100%. To where you just like, uh, she just like the rest of them. But then you finally meet some girl who, for me, it was Mackenzie, who I just thought, like, she's different. Right. And she just caught my eye. It's not to say, like, I do think she's beautiful. It wasn't like, she's, a, she's like, the most, you know what I'm saying? I think she is the most beautiful to me. Right. But it's not the looks. It is the looks, but it's not the looks. And right. it's like... Is a personality, but it's just something else. Like it caught my eye, and I was like, "All right, you're different." Yeah, and like I, I like that. Yeah. So for her, uh, my first, my first two years, I was going out a lot. Like went out a lot. Went to a bunch yeah. of parties. Went to a bunch of. I'm not obviously not a frat guy, but I was at frat houses. So like I, right. I kind of saw the whole scope of things. I never yeah. saw. Her. Like never saw her. Not to say she didn't go out because I know she went out. She right. was just low key with it, which yeah. that's cool. But I literally had never seen her, and so. Anna Reed walked up to me. I was cool with Anna Reed. Right. Uh, and I talked to her. She was with a little group of friends. Yeah. And then I was like, who is that? I was like, who are you? I didn't know who she was with. So I saw him. And Anna Reed came back over to me. She was like, one of my friends thinks you're cute. And I was like, please, God, let it be her. Like, talking about her. And I was like, yeah. I didn't want it to be, not to say nobody else didn't look, but I was like, please, please don't let it be nobody but her. Right. And so, really, from that, it was just like a weird not like I also it was, cheered freshman year, so it was weird because we were in a cheer. lot of, a lot of the same places at the same time. Like, yeah. not really, but and we, I just feel like we had like a little, we had like a little connection when we first met, and then I feel like one some some guy was trying to hit on her like the same night we met type thing, and, and he it, felt and like she, and she was more so using me like not really as the excuse, but she, like I'm kind of with him, so it kind of just like yeah. it made sense. I took her home and like just dropped her off, and literally was just we started texting, and then. I feel like after that, it was pretty much just like that it was more to it than like, I don't know. I feel like what guys kind of, or majority of like college guys, especially young guys, yeah. like you don't really know what you want. So you're just out there doing any and everything right. with anybody. Right. And so with her, it was more just like conversations all the time. Like she'll come over, stay all night. Just literally, we just talking. Yeah. Like having conversations, watching movies, doing whatever it is. Right. Um, it actually took him a a week to follow me on Instagram. We literally just mm. were texting. We weren't on Snapchat. We, yeah, weren't on, the, weren't nothing. on It was straight text. It was straight. And I feel like it was, at that time, it's like you're meeting everybody like through social media. Right. Or like I'm DMing somebody. It was right. like, like nah, I met her in person, yeah. talked to her in person. And I feel like that was, I don't know, you get to, because it is awkward. It's always going to be awkward, especially in the 100%. beginning when you're getting to know somebody. But at the end of the day, it's like, all right, we had a conversation. Yeah. And, it was almost like I'm replaying the conversations we had the first couple of nights because I'm like, I know what she looked like, but do she look like this all the time? It's like questions in my mind. I'm like, no, bro, here, because you gotta go, you gotta really gotta go through a process of seeing somebody at different phases. Different because it's one thing when a girl goes out and she dolled up and she's pretty. Right. Some people when they wipe that makeup off. Right. You and know, it just it changes your whole perspective. And then some right. people you see like, you know, you are actually pretty all the time. Right. Right, and that's that's literally how it was for her. Yeah. It's like I like her better when she don't wear makeup. Yeah, like she was asking for the wedding. I was like, "Don't just do your little eyelash." Do you, but like you don't need nothing else. She was like, "I gotta look a certain way." I'm like, "Nah, you don't need nothing." Right, you know what I'm saying? So I think between once I got to know her, that was obviously, but yeah. initially it was like the fact that I had never seen her, right, and that I feel like I was kind of out and about doing everything. Right. You know, so that's the main thing that caught my attention. So, what about you? Um, for me, this was more so like after we had met but because initially when i saw him i was like oh he's cute didn't know who he was i just knew that anna knew him but for me it was more the fact that like when you first look at brayden you think he might be like scary or intimidating or mean but and he did act that way to like everyone else but to me he was a tough guy he, he, he went through a tough phase yeah. you, you went through like a little i went through a little some some but it wasn't and yeah. he could still be that way but to me he was always like immediately that was like never the case he just it was like a barrier that was broken down he's like right. a big teddy bear yeah. and i always try to tell everyone that but it's hard for other people to understand that when they see him and yeah. they're like he's scary. it ain't for everybody you know it's not it's not for everybody <laughs> it's not for everybody i feel you gotta it's for it's, you, you can't be accessible like that there it's, yeah. it's for the loved ones that's it not even just her <laughs> not even loved ones literally just her everybody but you're a good like, friend too though yeah yeah, yeah yeah no for sure no for sure but i think that I don't know. Like I said earlier, I think that 
growing up, which is which is weird because like I never saw like kind of that interaction or what yeah. that relationship was supposed to look like. Right. I felt like that kind of just came natural, and it was just like I was around her. I felt like I could be comfortable. I felt like I didn't have to be like right. somebody I'm not. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't know. This is like we can. Uh, I do want to go here because I feel like part of it, I like show, unpacking my story, other people's stories, uh, and tell me y'all thoughts about it. But I think it's, I think it's cool because y'all are similar. Like I feel like all of us don't come from like the most perfect traditional households. You know what I'm saying? Like probably we, we would like to give to our kids, like kind of parents staying together. My parents broke up. Mackenzie's parents broke up. Both of y'all's parents. You know, like, right. and it, it's it's like the reality of everything. And I feel like how how much is I feel when you're younger, if you don't see it, you kind of got to go through a little more as an adult to figure it out. Right. You know, because like, I'm like, hopefully my, my little girl, she sees like, us like like being co- like being like sweet to each other, loving right. each other, and like being together. Because I went through that phase too. I was just like, I had never seen it. So it took me a while. And a lot of honestly, like really, like probably pain too, like right. that you go through, like you searching for something that ain't really there, but you think it's going to fill a void instead of like actually just committing to a person and like, you find that happiness there. You right. Know? So, I don't know if y'all want to chime in on that, but. Um, yeah, I feel like growing up, because I feel like something that I still kind of work on is, is the fact like I'm good whenever everything going smooth. And even when things get a little tough, I'd be straight. Yeah. But then it's like sometimes it's like, not to say I'm going to run from it, but it's just like, right. like why well, I got to deal with You know what I'm saying? Because that's all he's ever, like he's really that's, seen. Because that's, all, cause that's all I've seen. So it's something right. that like I subconsciously like have kind of attributed to it without right. even really knowing. Um, so I, I just think that that's some, you know, I got continue. Cause obviously y'all don't want, we eventually have kids. Like, yeah. I'm not, so. I mean, for me, my parents had been together until recently, Yeah. but they were, it wasn't your typical, like they were together, but it wasn't, I, I just knew growing up, I wanted some, someone that I like really loved. I didn't want it to be mm. a surface level. Like we're just together for the kids. Yeah. Type thing. So even though my parents stayed together until I was grown, yeah. I still knew that I wanted something more than that. Like affectionate. Yeah. Yeah. Because right, it was weird for me to see my parents like hug or no, I know kiss or like even hold hands. I was like, s- what same. are you doing? It's yeah, weird. but I feel like, the, like I've been around, like I've been exposed to different families, and you kind of it takes it takes you really being exposed to other people. Like I said, a lot of people they actually do have terrible marriages. They hate their jobs. They hate their lives. So, like, they only give the advice that they give. They just kind of just – they just survive through life. And then you actually see somebody thriving with a good marriage. They actually like each other. They love each other. They got kids, and they figure it out. And it's like, dang, that's actually possible. Right. Like, as growing up, I was like, I didn't think that was possible. But you see it, and it's like, all right, this is possible, and that's what I want. Um, I was going back to college. uh, I want to talk about just, like, (laughs) kind of finding yourself in college, like, playing football, uh, just – I feel we live in a very interesting generation, and I, I don't want woman and girl, but just as a as a guy, how you feel like finding yourself a football? How was football? And then really wherever you want to take it. Um, so I didn't start playing football until I was a junior in high school. Well, no. I played like pee wee, obviously. You play uh, quarterback in in, the, in middle school and coach. I think he did. He puts hey Glenview. I never played. I never played football at Glenview. Am I tripping? I try. I, well, I played quarterback. He told me I was. I was. I was a quarterback. He told me I wasn't going to be a quarterback. I, I, so I, was I was at the game. No, I. This never, was a year in middle school. No, this was like early, early. Like was it Jamboree game or something? It, it, I don't Bro, even know. Bro, I that remember far. being in this. Unless I'm tripping, I remember being in the stands. You, it was like a Glenview like scrimmage or something. I, I don't think. Maybe it, it might have been like a, it was. I knew it was in the summer because I remember getting in the car with my pops and I was like, I'm not playing. Right. But it was like a situation where played quarterback in Pee Wee. <laughs> I was like, I'm a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like that's what I that's what I do. Right. So I got out there, and this was like they time forties. They did uh, little, little John. John little I John remember little there. John. And so yeah, it might have it might have been a jamboree. Yeah. It was right there in the back in, in back at Glenview. And um, man, <laughs> coach told me you're not gonna be the quarterback. Hmm. I ain't playing, <laughs> so I ain't play. Um, regardless if it was a jamboree, screen, right? Whatever it was, I stopped that day. Right. Remember, I stopped that day. I was like, I'm just going to play ball. So yeah. I played basketball. And then junior year, junior year comes. I've already transferred to Seneca at this point. He left me. He was a he was an Anderson's finest, man, and you left. And I'm still – I still claim Anderson. I claim Seneca. I don't claim Hannah, but I claim I claim Anderson. <laughs> right. Um, well, what was Glenview? Glenview, Glenview was, was middle school. Middle school. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Glenview was in middle so, school. Oh, sorry. 
So T.O. Hanna wasn't. T.O. Hanna was, was, high school. was high school. I went, I went there my freshman year. Freshman year. I went there my freshman year. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he met Anna Reed. That, and that's yeah. how I know Anna Reed. getting a lot of pub. Oh, she, she, is, she is getting a lot of pub. Honestly, Anna Reed introduced all of us, and she introduced exactly. me to Bryce. Wow. Yeah. Anna Reed is the little. She's I know. Plug. She's the connector. <laughs> she, she's the connect. Um, I don't even know. Oh. So, was that Seneca? Obviously, moved there. I was trying yeah. to play ball. I was trying to play basketball. He really was a hooper. I, don't, I hope people I, know. Like That's what I'm saying. People don't really know. People don't they really don't know. know. They, don't, they, don't, they don't necessarily need to know. I'm not going to be that guy. When I was in high school, <laughs> I used, you know what I'm saying? I'm not never going to be that guy. I made it to the, yeah. to the right. NBA. But, he, but, but you, I mean, you was, was, was on the circuit. I was smooth. You was on the circuit. I was smooth, yeah. You was playing. Yeah. And then. And wish I would have continued playing basketball. I wish I would have went that route. But You I, think so? I wish I would have. But then we mm. wouldn't have met. But then we wouldn't admit I would have been at like a smaller D one. I wouldn't right. have been once, could, once Clemson. You could have been came, over in Turkey somewhere. Never that. <laughs> um But yeah, so I started playing I started playing football my junior year. Um Which is kinda crazy. It's crazy because the coach thought I was in there for a football meeting. Like I was in basketball I was in it was like P E four or whatever. Um I was hooping. The, I guess they had a football meeting at that same time. Right. So the coach thought I was in there for that. I'm like, I don't play football. Like I don't <laughs> And so uh, it was a new coach. Uh, he was cool. Yeah. So he was just like, man, just come out for spring practice. Just come out for spring practice. If you don't like it, you can pick wherever you want to play. Right. If you don't like it, call it quits. Yeah. I see. I see in the hallways. Whatever. So I went out there. I was like, I'm gonna play quarterback. <laughs> I was like, I'm still a quarterback. I'm not going. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to switch up on that. And couldn't throw a slant. Couldn't throw anything. Yeah. I was like, let me just go try to play receiver. So I played receiver my junior year. And then after my junior year, got offered by NC State. Uh, who was it? NC State, Virginia Tech, Clemson. Clemson right. was the third one. And so, which once- is actually crazy. People don't know like to not play like all through high school and right. then play one year and get like major D one offers. For is, sure. Is, is yeah, I mean crazy. it was it was surreal. And in the moment, I was like, my coach just told me he was like, we're going we're going to to a Clemson practice today. I was like, all right, cool. I remember when you came. Yeah, and I was just like, you used to wear. Uh, Boy, I used to wear terrible Boy, fits. Hey, look, let's t- let's pause yeah, right yeah, here yeah, for a second. Yeah, let's, let's switch to that. Let's, let's talk about. Do y'all remember the? Uh, yeah. Like, I guess it was high school ish, bro. If you had a polo shirt, some khakis, some khakis, some Sperry's and Wallabies. Uh, you know I had the Wallabies. And and maybe this was this one in high school. If you had a shell necklace from Hollister. <laughs> Bro, you had he it on. Fire. You had it on. He was fire. I literally remember. I remember you coming to Braddis. You had that. Uh, you had that I, polo I, plaid I, shirt I, on. The plaid shirt on. It was eight colors. Yeah. <laughs> but to, off, but bro. and they went through a phase. Everybody buttoned this up to the top. To the top. I don't know where that came from. I don't know, but, but it, was it was fire. Yeah, it was a phase. It was fire. Um, literally wore exactly that. They offered me, and I was like, I went home. I called my mom immediately. Talked to her. She didn't believe it. Hell, I ain't believe it. And so. <laughs> Couple hours later, I was like, "It's over with." Right, committed, just, that, committed that night, yeah, or the next day. I think is when I made the announcement. But, but I feel like you know, going through college, finding yourself. I was kind of, I was young, I was new to it. So on the field, it was a lot for me to kind of learn because you're right. playing. I'm playing at Seneca. I'm playing against right, right. You know, guys from Daniel West Stoke. It's yeah. like it's not really the same. Um, so I definitely got humbled. Yeah. Definitely realized early that you really not as good as you think you are. Um. I feel like everybody go through that process in college. Like, cause the thing is you, when you go play that level, it's like everybody's talented or you wouldn't be here. Even right. if you walk on. Like, right. Every, everybody, I'm going to say that. Right. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes it ain't that. But for the majority of people, like everybody's super talented. And a lot of guys, you definitely came on a good end, but a lot of guys go through that phase and really, like it really breaks them. Cause they ain't never experienced with real competition or being like in a highly competitive environment where everything right. Right. counts. And then, not everything's, not everything's gonna go your way. One hundred percent. I think. I think the biggest thing for me is that like, I loved ball, but I knew ball wasn't all I had. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I yeah. feel like a lot of guys struggle with that, especially yeah. either early on or just any time throughout their career. Like they, sure. they literally think like football or basketball, baseball, whatever sport they playing is like all they can do. Right. Um, and you know I loved it, and then but I feel like whenever I got suspended. Mm-hmm. That kind of whenever okay you're not playing no more. Nobody yeah. you practicing, but nobody cares. Like you're not right. playing on Saturdays. That kind of just opened my eyes to like, I want more than just. I kind of want to pause. That, that honestly was one of the. Looking back, it ain't funny, but it's like it's. Bro, I don't know how it happened. It's 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 funny because nobody knows how it happened. That's what that's the funny part. All right, get an overview. You give people details. So it's it's the nineteen season. 
So we won a natty. My freshman year, yeah, yeah, yeah. Went a natty. End of yeah, my freshman your, year. Freshman year. End of it. Um. Wait, it was eighteen year. Yeah. Eighteen. Oh, 18 it was eighteen. Eighteen year. So we're, we're on a national championship run, and what it's happened during bowl season. Mm-hmm. Right after ACC championship. We won the AC championship, and then uh, we take like the NCAA makes you take a drug test. They kind of test everybody for um for PEDs, performance enhancing right. drugs, and it's normally like. All right, guys do stuff on the team, but nobody usually gets popped for a PED. Right. Um, and so I remember, like, we get to team me and coach is like, I got some bad news. Dexter, uh, Braden. It was Logan Tish? Uh, no, Zach Yellow. Oh, my yeah. boss, Zach. Let me read. Let me, let's cut that out. Let me do that again. It was Braden, Dexter, and Zach Giella yeah. uh, got popped for Osterine. I had no idea what even what Osterine I never even heard the word. Right. Osterine. It really sounds like a mouthwash brand or something. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's it not, sounds like I don't. And what was it? The, they said it was point. It was like if you dropped a what was it? What was the analogy? You put uh, a piece of salt in a. You put a piece of salt in like a gallon of water. And now and then, and then they was that's just, like the comparative to like your bloodstream, whatever. Like how much blood is in your body? Right. And it could have been. It was like it could have been in so many things. Yeah, it could have been in anything. Like, bro, when I tell you the process was so, I was there. I had my lawyer there. I had uh, Natalie. Yeah. Natalie was there. Um, Sweeney was there. The president was there. Literally everybody. AD, that's when Dan was there. Yeah. Bro, and it was like, what do you get from Zaxby's? What do you get from Chick-fil-A? What do you wash your hair with? Bro, all the products on the table. Nuggets from Chick-fil-A on the table. Like, testing everything. That's crazy. And Because nobody knew where it came from. Right. And so, I think uh, somebody that Dex and Zach went to, they tattoo artists had at least knew what it was. Right. Um, everybody else I had talked to had never even heard of it. Yeah. So, they thought that was suspicious. I was like, I've never... They went and got tatted by the same guy. So, they right. thought that could have been something... I was like, I've never been to him. So, how did, how's it in my system? You know what I'm saying? Right. And we were all... Where we, I was Dexter Locker, mate. So we was right beside each other. I don't know if Zach was. Yeah. I feel like Zach might have been closer, at least in that same kind of area. But bro, still to this day, I have no idea. And then every I know, every you test missed after the natty, that, bro. bro. Y'all both missed the natty. And Dexter, we I, missed. Uh, yeah, we missed the Cotton Ball and the natty. Cotton Ball and the natty. Yeah, and then the whole next season until the end, which was crazy, crazy. And the f- funny thing about it is, that was my freshman year. Or yeah. Yeah. But then Natty, and then it was the next year, which mm. is when we met. Yeah. So obviously we didn't know each other, but my little sister was obsessed with Brayden. Like she, you know, she's in middle school. She yeah. thinks like the Clemson football players like look good. Right. So she was finding like the cutest one and she would yeah. find him all the time on the field and take pictures with him. And this is the year I cheered. And I was just like, what are you doing? Like you're 12. <laughs> um, but I remember when, before the Natty, my dad was like, Caroline, your boy got suspended. Like was saying, and so I right. vividly remember my dad talking about it, but I, I just like didn't know Braden at the time, so it's yeah. just funny. Full came full circle. Definitely full circle, but yeah, miss, that was like that was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy, and I feel like I don't know. Initially, I was kind of like, "Damn," because that's really all I could say. That, I was like, that, that's a definite damn. Yeah, moment. and then it's like Sweeney called me for a long time. We thought we were gonna be able to like go again. Like we basically kind of like cut the process. Appeal it. Appeal it. There, appeal there we it, go. Appeal it, appeal we it. thought we'd be able to appeal it. So I'm thinking for sure whenever they rerun the test, it's not gonna be a whole re- regular season. It's not gonna be a whole regular season. And so we go through the process, and that's like the first two months. So you really don't. So obviously, I already missed the two games. Right. And so now I'm, it's like probably February or March. Right. I'm going through mat drills, going through everything, and I'm like for sure, at least like. I missed the two games. Like, yeah, it sucks, but I'll at least be able to play the next year. Yeah. And then Sweeney called me one time. I remember I was in the I was in the uh, in my apartment. I was like, man, damn. And she said you were in Nordstrom with your mom. No, that wasn't. Was it Nordstrom? Mackenzie go. Mackenzie not gonna forget. She's not gonna you, forget. You Maybe guys it was a, told me when we we pulled up to the Nordstrom in Lexington, and you were like, "This is where we were. We got the news. We had a buggy full of Christmas stuff, and, and we left. Really left. <laughs> left it. Yep. That's exactly where we were." Yeah, I don't know where Good I got, I don't that is that's a great job. I don't know where I got it was in my apartment. Anyways, he called me and was basically like not getting the pill. It's it's all it's so it was a calendar year. So whenever I failed the test was like December right seventeenth or whatever, and then it was a calendar year, so that following December seventeenth. So I knew I wasn't gonna be back until after the like playoffs or before, right before the playoffs. Definitely was super duper tragic. Bro, pause right here because I actually went up to the school day to see Sweeney and they were doing mat drills. For people that don't know, like, Matt Drills is, that's Hell. a defining defining moment in my college football career. Yeah. Like, for real. It, um, 
to describe it, it's basically like somebody forcing you to go through stations and they're yelling, screaming. They're basically trying to break you. They're trying to break you and they're being dramatic with it. Like they're they're doing it on purpose. Doing it on purpose. They're trying it's it's like the first time the teams are all together besides right. working out and they're trying to build a leadership, chemistry, all that stuff. And it's it's designed to break you. One hundred percent. And so you're going through basically like a little mini boot camp and it's like I think it's like a six day run. So you like today they'll go afternoon, then tomorrow they're up at five thirty. Right. Then they'll go again. And so it's like a six day stretch of just like they trying to test your yeah. Test your soul. Yeah. Um what else I'm talking about? Moving on to McKenzie. Um is I guess describe college in like a nutshell for you. I guess you just finished, so I don't know. <laughs> but like, I guess, I guess <laughs> yeah, why actually, you, I, why I'm you so was, <laughs> why you were like, I guess like in school, how was it like, like? But she ain't been on campus in like. I know she ain't been on yeah, campus in, in a minute. minute. Yeah. But I, I don't know, like, cause I feel like one of the things I think a lot of people, a lot of our friendship came through college. Like, I don't know what you appreciate about college, how you feel like you found yourself in college. Yeah, I mean, my college experience is definitely different than theirs. Um, I mean, like, getting into Clemson was, like, the biggest. It was, like, so traumatic. Yeah. Because, obviously, took a picture, I had, You took a picture with your... Uh... Yeah, I was so excited when <laughs> I got was... that. And, like, I was, like... <laughs> but it was, like, 10 months after everyone else got theirs. Because I had to appeal. I got bridged mm. first. Okay. Um, which, it wouldn't have mattered, but I wanted to cheer. Right. And I had already tried out for cheer, but since I wasn't, like, actually in Clemson, they couldn't put me on the team. Right. So, they were, like, just appeal your decision. Let us know. And then when I found out... Um, they basically said, we'll let you into Clemson, but you have to come for six weeks over the summer and take two classes yeah. in six weeks, which is, that's really fast. I mean, right, I right. guess they do that over the summer now, but so I had come to Clemson, Clemson during my summer after my senior year in high school and get up at 8 a.m. every morning, go to class until 12 and then go to study hall until like five o'clock. Yeah. So that's all we did every wow. single day, Monday through Friday, but I got in. Which was a good thing. So I cheered my... Yeah. (laughs) Because if I did that and failed, that would have been really dramatic. Um, But, I mean, my freshman year was a very standard freshman year. I lived in the dorms. Like, this was pre-COVID. I had a very normal, you know... Yeah. I mean, I wasn't, like, going out and partying because I was scared, like, to use a fake downtown. (laughs) Because that was before people, like, did that. Like, now my... Sister, well, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, I don't know. I guess then, like my sophomore year was still very normal. Like yeah. I was living off campus with some friends. And then fast forward to like spring break is when COVID hit and it kind of screwed everything up. Um, I didn't go back to class. Was it a whole year? From... from when COVID hit, it was the middle of my sophomore year. So I remember it was the best thing ever because they let you, um, they... you could either pass or fail. Your... Oh, that was amazing. Yes. No, I, I remember, Ooh, bro, that was beautiful. I remember, um, I forgot what it was, but I, I think it, cause you can exempt a whole class. Mm-hmm. So if I remember, I, remember like I think I, above, you could just pass. Literally. I think I remember taking my final exam at the crib and I had all my textbooks. It was like some science class. And I think I made just a D, and I was I'm I'm exempting it. That was like everybody remembers during COVID. GPA, yeah. yeah, I must say that was like a defining moment of my COVID experience. I think I got a 4.0. You had to, no, yeah, you just passed. You just everything. passed unless everything you, unless you it failed. It. Unless you failed it, it wouldn't like affect your G, It wouldn't affect your GPA either way, and you were still getting the credits for passing the class, basically. Yeah, yeah. I don't so. I don't know why I did that. Because realistically, it was y'all. because we couldn't go take our we had to take our finals online, and right. it was like harder be. because we had to adjust. You know, the teachers were adjusting. Right. Everyone was trying to figure out how to I appreciate it, though. Yeah, I was very good. COVID was crazy. But COVID was wild. Actually, I, I kind of had a similar experience. Um, after my freshman year, after, like, the whole year cheering, I hurt my shoulder. I had I to have this. surgery, tore yeah. my labrum. Um, and that summer was really hard on me because I all I was, like, the whole my whole freshman year, I was, like, my thing is I'm a Clemson cheerleader. Right. So when that was taken away from me, mm. it was like, I've cheered my whole life. What do I have left? I'm yeah. just, I just go to Clemson. I'm just another regular girl. Like, I had to find something that I actually like doing away from that because I don't know if I'd ever... Oh, I can't do it forever. Right. And if I can do it at Clemson, then eventually it will become a day where I can't. So it was really hard. That was a really hard turning point in my life. But I'm glad that I dealt with it then yeah. and didn't have to deal with it when I graduated. 
for college. Sure. And then I never cheered after that, but not to say I didn't try. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I think everyone kind of goes through that in college one way or another, whether it's with sports or just life. Everyone has to go through that eventually. Like it's a when you grow up. It's like basically. an evolution. Like it's yeah. like the, I feel like it's a stage. I feel like college is like, some people don't go to college, but it's like that young adult phase post high school where like you've been this person and then you kind of in a stage where you're like, you got to not reinvent yourself, but you really got to like double down on who you want to be. Right. And life either something happens or kind of life forces it where you got to make a decision to be like, all right, this is what I'm going to be going forward and I'm going to figure it out. Um, right. And I feel like it's like a make or break time for a lot of people. And it's like, there's no perfect way to do it, but you just got to in that moment kind of dig, dig down deep and be like, all right, I'm going to. So I want to do. I'm gonna go for it and put my head down and right. and figure it out. Um, That's actually when I started TikTok. I was literally about to kind of, I was like I was about to get a perfect segue. I was gonna ask because obviously, like I want anybody that comes on the platform, people to see the person behind whatever they do. But obviously, that's a big part of what y'all do. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you kind of definitely you was on it early, to, like when it was embarrassing, <laughs> like 2019. It was the summer after I thought my freshman year. Weird. Yeah. Well, it was. That- ain't, ain't that part of it though? Because even when we was like, when we got on, you got on TikTok before I got, and you kind of, I remember like, I got on it because of her. And then I saw you doing it. I was like, well, let me get on. I got on during COVID. Right. And people, everybody thinks it's weird to us not. Yeah. You know, like, and I was like, everybody. Yeah. So yeah. I I like vividly remember down. I downloaded that summer just because I was bored. Yeah. You know. Like I, what was it then? I didn't even know. I didn't even know it was TikTok. Tic- was it was TikTok. Yeah. It, it had been TikTok for a little while, but it you know it came from was Vi- it Vine? Vine? Yeah. Um, I only or, got it was a, it was Vine and music. Musically, yeah. Musically, yeah, yeah. It had come from Musically, I guess. Uh, my sister had it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is funny. Like I'll just download it. Yeah. Just because I'm bored, I have nothing else to do, and so I kind of like got addicted to it. Yeah. But it was definitely embarrassing to have like people would clown you for it basically right like i cannot believe you have a tiktok, TikTok that's i don't want to be around was you. it like having only fans like <laughs> no, it no, was I'm like joking. having joking. this like very childlike no app, i know and then you're yeah. making these videos of yourself and right. it's like if people get a hold of those you're going to be bullied for the rest of your life right that's how people no no i remember because people had i don't know why people have such a, such a negative connotation with tiktok yeah and now it's become more acceptable but i remember earlier yeah. on it was like the connotation was just like childish kitty mm-hmm. whatever but I feel like after all that happened, I found out that I really like making content. Vid- yeah, videos, yeah. content, regardless if it was different. Um, so I was on it for a few months before we even met. And I remember I showed him because I just hit 100K. Yeah. And I was like, look, I have 100K. I just hit 100K on TikTok. He looked at me like I had 10 heads. Right. Um, he tried okay. to act interesting. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> he wanted to be like, yeah, you're weird. That's yeah. what he wanted to say. But then it, it came full again, circle we, we because... Was in that, we was in that awkward phase. So I'm just like, yeah, 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 that's awesome. But I feel like it did give me, or it gave us an advantage kind of because I was on it before everyone jumped on right. it. So like right when it was like blowing up, you know, I already, I knew how to make the videos. I knew yeah. I was on it. It was not new to me. Right. So we started making videos and right. I kind of felt like I had an advantage, yeah. I guess. I already had like, I had like 300, no, 200K yeah. maybe, but... The people weren't really. It was. They weren't like sticking around. Right. They were just there because they had seen like one viral video or something like that. So, it. I feel like it did help us in the long run because you know now it's like everyone's trying to get on. It's a Everyone, lot of people. Everyone's trying to get on now. Yeah. It's so saturated now. It's like right. Everybody's trying to do the same thing, which is fine. Like, that's literally like a dream job. It's literally like a dream job, bro. You got the freedom. You got. You kind of really do whatever you want to do. Our our first like uh the lip syncing videos. Yeah. It was actually an accident it was because i was trying to get him to do the savage dance do you remember yeah i was trying to get him to do that he didn't want to you know throw it back i don't want to so (laughs) (laughs) so we did that but it was just like an accident supposed to be funny we didn't think anyone was going to see it and it turned into this whole thing i know y'all had a good it was a good run the uh the flip flip. i know look hey run it up um i guess a lot of people there's a I don't know who told me. I think it was a middle school teacher. She said they gave a survey out in class, and it was kind of like a like a career survey, mm-hmm. and people could circle like whatever they wanted to be. And I want to say she said, I think sixty seven percent of kids put they wanted to be an influencer. I believe it. Like, and it's crazy. I mean, it's like the world we're living in. Like, I guess what was it like? Like, 
for it to finally happen, you know? I guess when you start making money from it. I started making money, it was uh, probably August of 2020. 2020. So we had been on it for a few months. And the thing is, when I first started it, I never even dreamed. I didn't even think that was a possibility. I was doing it because it was fun. Yeah. So I didn't even think, I knew, I, I had faith in myself like I was going to make something work. We're going to make some shit. Yeah, for, fi- for a job. Yeah, but we're gonna I was figure. doing it more as like a hobby. It was something I enjoyed yeah. doing and I liked making videos. Yeah. So I was not even in it for the fact. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know that you could make money from or like that it would get people, there eventually. People still don't. Yeah. Like I'm not going to lie. I was, <laughs> like I said, today I went to the school and I was telling Coach Sweeney, like he still don't like. Yeah, they don't you know that that, that generation. That, that generation is they just way, still they still don't understand like the concept how of, you can monetize social media. Yeah. And for the best way somebody explained it to me it was like, all right, in the past, it's going it's gonna lock some for y'all's parents out there. Look, yeah. In the past, money goes to where people's eyes are. So in the past, also people are on billboards, on like people put, put stuff on cars. Right. That's what people only people could see it. But I don't watch I don't watch TV that much. Even people did a lot of commercials, which is still a thing. Right. Obviously Super Bowl weekend, stuff like that. But everybody's eyes are on our phones. So that's like the idea of where influencing mm-hmm. came from. It's like, all right, you, people are the new billboards. Right. And people, it's kind of, I saw so, so I mentioned, but people get paid to basically present stuff for brands. And it's a lot of money in it. It's a lot of money in it. It's, like, it's just a part of their marketing. It's just, and, and the thing is, people don't realize too, is like on the business side, is these companies have marketing budgets that like, that's they, just going to they, they have to fulfill or their department gets cut. Yeah. So it's like the money's gotta be spent. Yeah. And if you got a platform, obviously a good manager, all that stuff comes into play. It's like you can really make not even like a living. You really can you know, like a really you can do well in life. You can do well in life. Yeah. And well actually the first few months that we were making it, you know, Braden obviously that was all he before didn't, NIL. Yeah. He wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. he wasn't making money on it for a while. But I, before I was even making money, I basically had to like really talk him into making videos. Like he hated it, really. Right. He didn't want to do it ever. It was like. It was, a, it was, we got into arguments. We got into, I mean, like seriously, bro. Because just, it was in that phase of people, it was a connotation. People thought, like, oh, bro, you, not you saw. Yeah, like, but just like. Oh, yeah, you remember when. Well, well when, even me, I thought it was weird. So I was like, I really didn't right, want to right. be. Yeah. I was like, bro, I'm not trying to make videos all the time right. type thing. And we and got into arguments and then. That one video that everyone was making fun of him because he was dressed up as a girl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that was like, I just it all it well one it all comes full circle, but two it's just funny how it definitely all comes full circle. It's funny how like, especially when I was on it early, you know, you in a locker room, people you gonna you oh, gonna hear you gonna hear everything in the, the jo- world. That's probably the best thing for anybody is like you gonna have tough skin. Them jokes gonna fly. They're gonna fly, and yeah. and yeah, and so it's just funny to see like on the flip side now, really really not so much now because once I was my junior my senior year NIL was in play everybody kind of knew right. what was kind of going on they knew I was making money from it right. but like when it first started happening it was funny how like the guys that was like laughing at you type thing hey bro or, how you make this video yeah, don't were you asking for advice now yeah, you know yeah, what I'm like, saying but, yeah. not, but, but it's like it's all love either way but it's like it's just funny to see how it comes full circle though it, it comes full circle and then it's like everybody I swear every major trend though everybody thinks it's weird till it's not cause right. then COVID was really what people started to really accept TikTok. Right. And then now it's like everybody's trying to figure out how, how to get on it. I see some people on TikTok that's in, that's either in the league or just like dudes that I'm yeah. like, and I see you putting the effort towards it. So, so Yeah, don't, don't act like you don't care. Yeah, don't act like you don't care about you it. You definitely care. Um, but I mean, to each his own, bro. I mean, it's bread in it. And it's yeah. not unlimited bread, but it's like, it's bread for everybody in it to a certain extent. It's right. like. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything about the way it happened because I feel like the fact that I was on it before, right. people were like, your TikToks are cringy. And I'm like, well, I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it definitely worked out in the end. And I'm glad that I like always tried to force Brayden to make videos. How do you feel? Because it, it changed, changed. I would say people are scared. like Because I feel like even like you alluded to that, I think some people like are scared to make content or even not even if it's not content, put themselves out there. Like what was that like thought process? Like, all right, I'm going to put myself out there and just test the I, waters. Yeah. I, th- I think for, I think for us, cause obviously a lot of our content was together. Right. So we just got to the point where like kind of brought it all back to, I guess it was square one for her. Not wasn't really yeah. square one for me. Square one for me was like, I don't want to do it, but we kind of got on the same page. Like, okay, let's do, we doing it because it's fun. Like right. we're not trying to make, we're not trying to make money. Right. We're not like, Cause if you sit there and think like 
I'm going to post at 3 o'clock today because somebody said that's the perfect time to post on TikTok. <laughs> it's like that shit is not going to work. Yeah. With, when you make a random ass video at 9 o'clock at night and just post it right before you go to sleep and look at that's when it's going. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not, not a, but you go, that's the thought process behind it yeah. when you're not thinking about it. Um, and so for us, we just tried to simplify it. Like, right. Make make content when it's there. Obviously, if we're going on a crazy trip or we're doing something, we're going to make content. Right. But like, and then just don't expect everything to go viral because it's not. And yeah. when you expect that, it makes you hate it. Because you like, damn, bro, like, last time I did this video, it got 3 million views. And now right. I got 100,000 or it's got 500. You know what I'm saying? It's like. And it doesn't really matter that much about going super viral anymore. Right. Like that's yeah. not. That was back in 2020 when that mattered. Now what? it's like you just need to have a consistent following, basically. Right. A community. Yeah. yeah. But my thing I always tell people is just if you want to put yourself out there and you're nervous. You just need to be yourself and be real because the second you try to start acting like someone else, you know, you get awkward and it people can tell it's not genuine. So that's my biggest thing. Like if you if you want to do content, you want to put yourself out there, just be yourself. You have something you want people to like know or hear. Um, it's worth the try, basically. Yeah, it think, changes people's lives. Yeah, no, I, it, it I definitely. Think, y'all think going off what she said, people subconsciously know that it's not genuine. You know what I'm saying? Like if, I if I if I if I no. watch a video, I'm not gonna sit there and say I, they just keep scrolling because they like eh, it's just right. but like they don't I don't know if they say it out loud, but it's almost like a subconscious thing like right. I'm not really engaging with this. Like I'm just gonna keep it moving. And people you make multiple videos like that, people are gonna understand you people are like, why am I not getting because you're posting about stuff that you either really don't care about, you just right. wanna show to people that like you think it's like this cool thing, but but it's definitely not easy because I def when I started I definitely wasn't being myself. I was it was kind of like a wall and I was trying to put on a right like persona that I was someone I was not. And really like recently like in the past year I feel like I've gotten more comfortable. So it definitely takes time. It's not it's not as easy as it sounds. It takes a lot of courage too. I think a lot of people because it's definitely a cool thing, you know, like right. especially in the age we grew up in. Like I was having this conversation with somebody the other day. Brother, new, like, resume, people, like, when you meet somebody now, the first thing you go to is their social media. Right. Like, it's like, that's such a new thing. Like, our parents did not grow up like that. They, they weren't, like, they met somebody and it's just, like, kind of word of mouth. But, like, the first thing, when I meet somebody, or if you're out, you don't exchange phone numbers anymore. You exchange Instagrams or mm-hmm. TikToks. Hey, follow me, follow me, whatever. So, it really is, like, a, it's like a, it, the, the priority or just, like, the perception of it is really high in our generation. And so, I think it's definitely worth, worth going for. Uh, the idea of having courage because one thing I, w- I want to talk about because I feel like we've all experienced it some way when you put yourself out there there's like a uh, you get followers there's always a loud minority that people going to hate 100% you know it, but if it, it's, at times it feels like the majority but even though it's like a loud minority like how have y'all dealt with like hate um, or criticism but more so it's, it's definitely like yeah. people we hating I feel like Brayden really never cared about it. He would just, you know, he goes to sleep at night and he doesn't even think about it. Right. Or he wouldn't even really read the comments. It doesn't, it just kind of like rolls off his shoulder. Um, For me, it took a long time to get to that point. So when people, one person, it would be like one person leaves a hate comment. Um, I would get really worked up and I'd feel like I needed to prove yeah. them wrong. Like, you don't know me. This is what you're saying is not true. Right. And I always felt the need to prove something to these people. And then... It was hard. It definitely was hard. There was times when I was like, maybe I don't need to do this. I can't handle it. Right. Like it's it's hard to go it's hard to go through not everyone can. You have to be really strong not to like listen and believe what people are saying about you, but I think when I started to realize most people are just jealous, they want to get a reaction or And most it may people be. honestly they just want attention cuz they in a crazy part, they comment and it's cr- to me, it's just crazy because I could never see myself going on somebody's picture and commenting something crazy. Yeah. Like, just like that, that rationale, people out there are weird. But they really comment. And most times, if you actually DM them or direct or say something to them, they'd be like, oh, I was just kidding. They always backtrack. I mean, I was just kidding, man. So much love. Love what you got going on, bro. They try to make it seem like it's a joke. Yeah, but, it but it's like you took your took the time, you took the time, out, to say it. time yeah. of your day to comment. For most people, they... Try, you know, I feel like when you read the comments, they want to be the top like comments. So they decide right, to say, what TikTok. can I say that's going to get the most likes and yeah. be top comment with right. 10K likes? Because it's funny. 
And they yeah. don't even mean it. Yeah, I feel like, especially like for her, I feel like for anybody, when you're going through the process of trying to like either grow your platform or it's like you're constantly trying to grow it. But like when people have like no idea who you are, right? you want to make it seem like you're not, if somebody comments something crazy about you and you like, I have to say something to this person to address the fact that I'm not whatever they're saying. Right. Whereas once you kind of, people have, have at least seen your videos before, yeah. at least kind of know. Got a feel for you. Got a feel for you. They're like, Okay, they already kind of have their own opinions about you, so you don't have to sit there and go through every single comment and right. comment. So I feel like that's probably what she's learned, probably going through it. And not everybody gonna like you too. That's part not of life. everybody. You know, and, and that's part of life is like sometimes it hurts though, because especially on social media, people gonna voice their opinions. But at the end of the day, like it's just like yeah. not everybody gonna like it. Not, everybody gonna, not everybody's gonna agree with what you're doing. But there's always a way to do it. Some people are just like yeah. It's not always what you do; it's just how you go about doing it. One hundred percent. Um, and because like people. They see like twenty five percent of our life. Like it's very small. It's not like they see everything. Right. So I guess we just had to get to a point where it's like they don't even know us. Yeah, that, they think and, they know us and they don't. And that was probably another big thing that we kind of made a decision on going through it. We were like, we're gonna have privacy. Like it's right. cool. Like to, we're gonna we're gonna show probably what we're doing, where we're at, things yeah. of that nature. But you're not gonna know every minute detail of what's going on in our life. Right. Obviously, like some of our close friends do. Right. Um, but. As far as like just putting arguments out there on like or taking like even if we got a crazy argument, bro. Some people, and, some people. I just think there's a line, and we ain't talk about this. Is like there's just a line to me that I'm on. It's only so far I'm gonna go. Yeah. Not everybody got that line because some people, yeah. some people don't have any. They don't have no line. Don't have no line. And because I think it can really like it's like anything to go viral. Anything. And then, like, at what cost are you just going to, like, put anything out there? And yeah. it's just like, and then and once you do that, there ain't no going back. Like, once yeah. you kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I feel like we've never really had the conversation about, like, because I feel like it's kind of just been understood. Right. Like, we're not, like, posting crazy art. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just just for right. something to go viral. It's like, it's, it's never worth that. Right. Um. There's so much more you can do. Like you can do funny things, you can do relatable things, right. and you without having to share intimate details of yeah the drama of your life. No, I know it. Actually, is wild to um, somebody was telling me the other day. They were just like the idea of social media now is like everybody has their own reality TV show. You literally no, it's and it's like the idea makes you like they yeah. Have, it, then it, everybody's their own like producer. Yeah, because you can... You basically... Anybody can make anything. You, you can, can make anything. You share your life. And it's like, when you think about that, it's like, dang, the world's changed. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, when he told me, I was like, it made me just think like, dang, this is crazy. Yeah. I wish we would have had our reality TV show. If that would have taken off, we would have been... If it would... Okay, I'm only saying this because if it would have taken off when it did... When it did. When and it it, did. if it would have recorded crazy. everything that we went through, we would be the next... Kardashians. No, and no, I, no, no, I have no, full for sure. Faith in for sure. That. I, I know life's still going, going. We still going up, no matter what. But that was a stage. I was like, that would have been cool. Let's touch on, let's touch on college a little bit. Then we're going. I want to get to the wedding, um, and just talk about marriage. But I'm trying to frame this. He can cut this too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a big part of like all of us coming together was that was our friend group at the time, right? And like it was all the guys playing ball, and then it was kind of all the girlfriends, and we kind of all came like a tight knit, fun group. Y'all always saw we get ready for the games, and then we would just play ball. Right, right, yeah, right, I was right. trying to think of like the the opposite. Like we were but it was bigger. It was off the field too, though. It wasn't yeah, just like on the field type. That's thing. what I'm yeah. saying. We all just got really close, and then the girls got really close. And I think that's big because I think anybody out there, when you can find another couple that you really vibe with, like. That's key because a lot of times it's like either the guy don't get along with the other guy, yeah, or the girl don't get along with the other girl, and so you be it's like one person obviously the guys want to be cool, the girls want to be cool. You trying to make it work, and sometimes it don't work, and it's just like damn, this ain't gonna work. But then yeah. when you find like a couple that you really vibe with, yeah, it's like bro, life's fun, right? Um, and one of the biggest parts was I I came up with this. I don't know if I ever told anybody this, but I was the one that came to Real Housewives of Death Valley. It was on. Um, it was my. You commented on my. Picture. It was on her picture, and I always. I'm a friend. Is I'm. I just if I if I follow you and we friends, I'm gonna comment and boost. Right. I just. I just. I'm like no matter girl guy. Like if I see something you post, I'm gonna comment something. Like just show some love. And so it was a picture of you, Marissa. It was the first. I know the picture, first yeah. like first uh, time we ever met. Yeah. Actually. 
first like game day with the girls it was all you marissa tiffany and mckenzie and i had commented real housewives of death valley and it was on it was on instagram so it got like a lot of likes and then i don't know where it went from there from there it it was really slow for a little while and then some people would start to make videos and they were calling us that That's what so it was. we were like wait cuz at first we were like we would never call, call you ourselves you would not be self proclaimed yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then i think mckenzie made a it was when she made the um, q and a with all of us and right. she made the title that as kind of like a joke yeah and then oh well, yeah it took later off. that year like close to the when y'all were in the playoff game when, yeah what did you play ohio state uh no uh, notre dame no 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 no, 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 no. it was ohio state it was around that time when everyone yeah. was like talk it was it blew up for a little while like the whole mm. real housewives of death valley bro yeah. it was i mean it was like a real thing in college football i remember girls uh would make videos i gotta meet the people and then when y'all go to away games, I remember people used to make TikToks about like I can't wait to meet. Yeah. Right. Look, y'all they were like, how can I be? They got more. They had way more clout than us. They were, like, people, were, the girls were supporting the girls. It was like I want to meet the Real Housewives of Death Valley. And then, some other schools started doing. I remember like Alabama. They tried to they do did. the Real Housewives of. But you can't outdo the door. Yeah. You can't outdo the door. <laughs> you can't outdo the door. Uh, who got shirts made? Um. It well, someone reached out to me. Yeah. And they wanted to make them, and I was like. Uh, Sure, you could. I think they already had made them and they sent me pictures. Right. So sure, you can send my way. Yeah. And so then I just gave them to the girls, yeah. and I still have my shirt somewhere. That was a that was a fun phase because honestly, y'all like y'all used to have all all the girls have matching outfits, the matching numbers, the right? Yeah. And that's I want to, like before we move on to marriage, I feel like that's because there's a lot of college athletes out there, I mean, a lot of athletes out there, and bro, what you want more than anything, you just want a girl to support you, come to the game, one hundred percent, like. I don't know, like get you a gift basket for fall <laughs> camp. Maybe send you like a text on game day. After games, win or lose, you just want somebody to kick it with. Like, you know, you got a right. guaranteed friend. Because right. you don't realize after games, sometimes like it just be kind of awkward, especially right. when you're single. Because like you just run all these people, you got a big win. Like, you got to go sit back at your apartment by yourself. Right. Or your family might be over. And it's just like, yeah. when you got a girlfriend, it's like, all right, I got a guarantee, hold me after the game. Right. Win, lose, a draw, and so, how would y'all? I don't know if y'all touch touch on dating, I don't know, football relationships. Like, I don't know. How was a few? How was a few? How was it for you? Oh, I thought you said how was a few. I'm with that. Um, I f- yeah, I feel like for me, um, I feel like I didn't really start. I guess I didn't really start playing for real until after we were together. Uh, so. Thanks. We I literally, we were talking when yeah, you played your first. Yeah, whenever I came back from the suspension, my right. first year obviously wasn't really playing a lot. Right. Uh, I think for me it was just kind of like it was what I was used to because by the time, yeah, by the time my junior year we was already dating, right. so that's really all I knew. Obviously freshman sophomore year I'm like yeah. we win a big game or not I'm going out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We lose I'm still going out. <laughs> regard like right. regardless. So that was kind of my mindset, and then it was like had her to experience it with me it was kind of like honestly she used to get mad at me sometimes because like i ain't really want to go out no more because it's like what am i going what am i going out for you know what i'm saying especially like when you go downtown clemson like you're going out for one thing if you you know what i'm saying if you're, you're not going out just to have to have fun you know what i'm saying so i feel like but you can but you can't can. can. that was my experience i, was I definitely her. started like we all like because i didn't really i didn't go out uh beginning college because i was more so like I ain't gonna say I was too religious, but some of it was legalistic. I think there's like, all right, I don't wanna be out here because I wasn't trying to move like that. Right. And I, Mackenzie was, we we're doing long distance. So I was like, there's really no reason for me to go out here and be in the mix without my girl. All right. So I usually did never go out. So whenever she moved up here to Greenville, I was like, all right, you know what? I don't wanna do it every time because I just feel like it can just get really old really quickly. Yeah. Like I think it's fun, especially when you meet a group of friends. We all go out together and have a good time. But then um, you definitely can go out and without like, on a mission, you know. No, you no, you yeah. definitely you definitely you definitely can. It was just a weird time because of COVID and like who was gonna be there type thing. Like a lot of people weren't going out during that right. time period. But I my whole thing was like we're not gonna be in college forever. Mm-hmm. Like we're we can't we're not just gonna, you know, in ten years go out downtown Clemson. Get right. people before we before we move to the next phase of life, get people like your college dating advice. Mine or both of ours? You speak, hey, speak your truth. You speak for yourself. I, okay, this is a... <laughs> this is a hot take? What you about to say? <laughs> um, this is a very, I feel like this is a very controversial topic about, you know, being single 
in college or dating someone. Right. But I feel like it really is hard to come into college and stay with someone and not get that college experience. Um, because I feel like to a certain extent sometimes some people, like you need, you got to get it out your system. Um, mm, you know, like you don't want to get it out of your system when you're married later on in life. You know, if you feel the need to do whatever it is, you need to experience life, you need to grow up, you need to mature. I feel like college is the place for that. So I think sometimes some people, they'll, they'll come in with a relationship and then they realize, okay, maybe I don't need to be in a relationship and then it just causes problems or right. they figure out after college and it's too late. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of too late because you break up after four years of college and then it's like, well, we're, it's going to kind of be hard to meet people now yeah. type thing. That's my advice like coming into college i feel like it's just easier i don't know i feel like Braden would say the same thing don't you think yeah i think i think he literally told me if we met in high school that we wouldn't have made it like no, we would no, have no, I, I told my kids i think i met her at the perfect time I like said literally the, the perfect time because even even all right this is this is a real conversation is we all everybody comes to a relationship with a past of some sort right. and I didn't know Mackenzie in high school. Right. And so, um, like, the things, like, when she was becoming a woman and you go through different boyfriends and whatnot or different guys, is, like, if we probably went to the same high school, I probably wouldn't have, like, been fond of her because I would have knew the guy. Right. And it's, like, my rule is, like, if I know somebody you talk to. Exactly. It's, like, right. it's, just, it's just off limits for me because I just, my personal pride, like, I'm, like, right. you ain't, you can, we can't be double, yeah, double dipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um... I, like I would say, I met her at the perfect time because it was like, all right, I didn't know the guy she, she had like been in relationships with or had stuff with. And so it was like, it didn't really matter to me. Right. And I feel like it was perfect timing. Yeah, I think, like I told her, I, I don't, we went into the high school, same high school. It would have, no, it would have been no way. Because, only because I feel like you want your spouse significant, you want them to have experienced something before you. Or you know what I'm saying? Or not necessarily, but even if it's just like going out single, going out like, cause then their whole life they're gonna be wondering what if. And like, I don't ever want, I don't know. That's just, that's how I personally feel about it. Yeah. Um, I just think that I wouldn't want her to be like, man, what is, what is, what is it like being single just going out in college? Or what is sure. it like, you know, doing whatever? Yeah. And I just experience as much as you can. And not to say that people that are in relationships can't experience stuff, but it is different whenever you're, you don't really know what you want until you, you experience different things. So. Right. I guess mine would be, I would say, um, I'm trying to think. So I started, I, I was single my first year of college and then I'd probably say just be like, you don't really owe it's not the word experiment looking for, but it's like, I ain't just be, being open and being honest with the person you're dealing with in college is very key because I feel like you're growing so much and learning so much and changing so much. And because I do think you could be in a committed relationship in college, but there's several times we took breaks and it was really just because we were both growing and I was immature at times and she, and she was frustrated and I didn't want to waste her time. And she didn't want me to waste her time. And so it's just, when you're going through college, there's so much, like, going on. But as much as I would say, like, like have your own friends, have your own experiences, is if you find somebody, like, you're never going to – there aren't too many people in the world. I don't think there's one person for every person. I don't believe that theory because I feel like there's people – it could be people for you. You just make the person your own person. Right. But if you find somebody you really, like, connect with, you find somebody you're attracted to, you find somebody who's like-minded and – it's open to growing as a human being. You find somebody who shares like similar family values. You can see them being a husband or a wife. Newsflash, bro. You, you're not going to find that everywhere. Right. And so I would say don't take that for granted. As much as I would say being open to being like a college student is like, if you find somebody good, like you are capable in college, like figuring it out. And you, the whole beauty of everything is like the journey together. Like you go through college together. Next phase of life, there's gonna be more phases. Like you're gonna have, like now I'm I'm my dad. Like you're gonna have phases of life. So if you find somebody that's good at any stage, like I fight you're capable of figuring it out. That's how that's what <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You just you just figure it out. Yeah. yeah, I feel like some people definitely like if you find that person, then you know. Right. Like for me, or like 
okay, I come from Florence. So say if I met someone in high school, I thought they were the one for me. Right. And they really were terrible. <laughs> a terrible person, but I think I'm in love. Yeah. And like, I want to be with them forever and I want to marry them. Right. Well, the only way I would realize that's not the case is I mean, if, you know. I'll, it's a flower. Yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> the only way I would, if I stayed in Florence forever. Yeah. Or like didn't, you know, try to meet right. other people. Then I would never realize like, okay, this person's probably not. Like there's there's no one else that's better for me. I would never realize that. Right, you, just, you need experience, you need yeah. exposure. Um, but all to say, look, the reason y'all here is because y'all worked out. We've worked it out. Worked it out. Look, and we have very exciting news. We, you know, the wedding's coming up, bro. How was it just getting to this place? You know, like you had a you've had, 